Hi, I'm Shisa Mickey. I'm Slavic Polymath. And I'm Robo Philip. You didn't expect that one, did you? You're watching Wonkistan now with more Rowan than ever before. We're very pleased to welcome the first of what we hope will be many collaborators to this channel. Rowan has been bringing nuanced discussion to cultural and political issues for years with his vlogs, blog posts, and excellent Week in 60 videos. So he's just the person to help us think through the complex, emotionally charged events that have been unfolding between the Russian government, the Orthodox Church, and the feminist punk collective Pussy Riot. Look out for such Wonkistani themes as identity, styles of protest, cultural capital, and the politics of place. Take it away, guys. First, some context. The Cathedral of Christ the Savior in Moscow was consecrated in 1883 in commemoration of 50 years of smugness about Napoleon. It was demolished by Stalin in 1931 to make room for a monument to socialism, which never actually happened, languished as a giant hole in the ground, became the world's largest outdoor swimming pool, was rebuilt with the donations of ordinary citizens after the collapse of communism, and was re-consecrated in 2000. And Pussy Riot are a Russian punk collective whose protests against the Putin government usually take the form of highly disruptive musical performances in public places. In February, members of the group released an online video of such a performance, which took place in Christ the Saviour Cathedral. It was entitled, Punk Prayer. In the video, they trespass on parts of the church that are normally off-limits to the public, invoke the Virgin Mary to drive out Putin, and make unquestionably crude and vulgar remarks against the Orthodox Church and the government. This fact is important, because the wave of support we saw for Pussy Riot from Western artists over the summer largely ignored the core details of this event. And as we know, Wonkistan loves accuracy and nuance. In March, three members of Pussy Riot were arrested on charges of hooliganism with motives of religious hatred. Now, it's worth noting here that hooliganism is an actual legal term in Russia. It's somewhere between disturbing the peace and disorderly conduct. In August, they were convicted in a highly public, very, very controversial trial, and in October, one of them was released after an appeal, while the other two were sent to prison camps in central Russia, with no regard to the fact that they had families with children. Now, other members of Pussy Riot have fled the country, fearing arrest. It's been several months since the trial took place, so you might be wondering why we're talking about it now. The distance has allowed the discussion to cool down somewhat, so we can talk about the less obvious but still really interesting parts of the case without the direness of the trial and the arrest slanting our rhetoric. As an Australian Protestant living in Scotland, there are a lot of cultural and religious elements to the Pussy Riot case that I just don't understand. But it does intrigue me, and I think that we shouldn't be afraid of getting involved in discussions like this, even if we feel a little bit out of our depth. Not only because honest, intelligent discussion helps broaden our own understanding of events like this one, but because our own unique perspectives allow us to contribute something unique to the conversation assuming we can articulate ourselves. I'm a practicing Orthodox Christian, I was born in Russia, and I have strongly negative feelings about the Putin government. I especially get sick to my stomach when I think about the Church's complicity in supporting the regime, and I support Pussy Riot's right to free speech. But I also realize how incredibly complicated and sensitive the setting of this event was, and part of me hurts to see the cathedral sitting at the center of this argument. From my own religious perspective and interest in Christian civil disobedience, I see a lot of parallels here between this action and the one taken by Jesus in throwing out the money changes from the temple. You see, Jesus was Jewish, and he stood up against a practice within his own sacred place. The members of Pussy Riot are at least culturally orthodox, even if they're not practicing. So how can they really be charged with religious hatred? Don't they have some sort of ownership over this space? Were Pussy Riot's members orthodox enough? Is the charge of religious hatred warranted if the people doing the protesting are not active in the church being affected by the protest? It's ambiguous. The aftermath of this protest also exposes many of the ways that the Russian Orthodox Church is all bound up in the Russian government, which I guess was the point. If the intimate relationship between church and state hadn't been so stark, maybe this protest wouldn't have been so alarming to so many people. And then there are people, including every American college student I've talked to about this issue, who just hear government shutting down free speech, and then suddenly generalizations about Russians and Christians are being thrown all around the international press. Yeah, the way the press has been talking about these events has been characteristically heavy-handed. Plus, journalists and news agencies on all sides of the issues have repeatedly referred to the defendants as girls, even though they are grown women and mothers. Exactly! It takes quite a bit of research and effort to understand Pussy Riot identity, strategies, particular style of activism, and musical and cultural predecessors. And when all those performative layers come up against modern Russian politics, the Orthodox Church in Russia, the particular history of Cathedral of Christ the Savior, exhaustingly complicated is just the start. This sounds like a lot of work, and I guess it is, but we have to remember this context is vitally important to the identities of everyone involved, and also the millions of other people who are also attached to each of those identities. When it comes to reporting this event to an international audience, there's no room for sloppy journalism. 
And this is why Wakistan was started in the first place. Thank you so much for helping us think this through, Rowan. We sure hope you'll be back. I reckon that's a pretty safe bet. Mm, can I leave my toothbrush here? Aww. And that's all for now. And there's always more in store at Wakistan.com, including occasional glimpses of this cute face. And new content three times daily. Until next time.